the flagship keyboard instrument of GarageBand has to be the Alchemy Synth. It's actually a Logic Pro X plugin, but it's given here on GarageBand as a slightly sort of economized version, but certainly not economizing on the sound quality. Now, so if I open this up, I'm given a sort of rather metallic uh, sort of keyboard, futuristic keyboard look. So I've got my standard keyboard set up with my pitch and modulation wheels that you'd find on any hardware controller and my velocity control. But this time I've got a sort of XY sort of pad here. Now it's defaulted to Epic Cloud Formation. So if I just give you that here. synth sound. Now, if I drag this box around this, um, these sort of eight squares, I can get technically infinite variations. Now, just before I do that, I'm going to swipe this to the right because we get a few other controls that are, are pertinent to the sound that you, uh, that you select. So when I play a note and go around this XY pad, you'll see all these controls turning. <laughs> Now, masses of changes are happening inside that keyboard sound. So even if I press record, I can get something that actually sounds pretty good and it will actually remember everything that I, every movement that I make of any of the control knobs, whether it be with the X, Y or a single wheel control. What it won't do though, is to allow me to edit those afterwards. But you know, you can just record your performances, you can do multi-track take recording, you just, you know, you just get the sound you want when, when it happens. And there we go. So if I go back to the beginning now, it will remember the sounds that initially were there at the start, and then it will change all the controls exactly as I'd done them. And there you go. So all of the presets are available. You get sort of um, options here, including the arpeggiated ones where you can get um, some sort of quick sounding um, chords. Uh, delete controls recording, yes, okay. Switching instruments will now delete your existing knob movement recording, but will not erase the notes you've played. Do you want to continue? Yes, I do, but I'm actually going to get rid of the track that I recorded there, because I, I don't need it anymore. It's just for the purposes of this uh, demonstration, but it's worth seeing that as a, um, as a, uh, as a me an error message, as it were. So just returning to this, I've got 70 synth ARP. Now, what happens is when you play a note, it will generate a rhythm that pertains to the tempo that you've got set. And then the more notes that you add, it will cycle between those. So if I have lots going on here. You can change the arpeggiator settings using this button here, where you can actually make it go uh, faster or slower. Now, sometimes you can't do it unless you actually switch the arpeggiator on because this is a preset. So if I go into keys, for example, uh, synth piano, let's try that. So this time I'm gonna switch the arpeggiator on, which will then give me a range of options to change the the frequency of the notes and how many octaves range it is. So if I do this. Note rate, I can make it go twice that speed. I mean, I've created huge numbers of notes by just having the arpeggiator on and you can increase the octave range as well. note order, you can have it going up and down or down and up or random or as played, you know, the whichever notes. Uh, so it's hugely powerful, hugely. 
arpeggiata up only, down, random. There we go, that's, that's how powerful the arpeggiator is, and it's a, a feature that was really built into every classic synthesizer. So you can see that this is very much um, a, a highly usable tool. So the controls that are shown here depend on the synth um, sort of uh, preset that you've got. So for example, dirt, I mean, that's basically like distortion. You can hear that the, it's sort of got a bit crusher and a bit of sort of noise added. Now, the cutoff and resonance are the really the two big features of a synthesizer. Well, you've got that, and you've also got things like the attack, the decay, sustain, and release. Now, you can't really tweak all of those on the um, iPad, but you just call up different um, sounds just to get, generate your different ideas, really. I mean, there's even a Hammond organ uh, sort of synth on this, uh, rather bizarrely, given that there's a real one here. But, you know, you might want a, a sort of um, a, a transistorized organ like the Vox Continental or the, um, the Yamaha YC series, maybe. Uh, I've done a demo of my Y series organ, YC series uh, Yamaha organ. Check it out on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a, a sort of an organ that you would have got on a, like a Roland synth back in the 1980s. So there we go. I mean, it's, it's so impossible to list all of the features of this uh, synthesizer, but the best thing to do is just to play with it and see what happens. And the, the, really, the, the upside to this is that you can get something that's completely different from anyone else's version of alchemy because of the number of combinations there are involved here.